Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at just how vulnerable cold environments are and why they need protecting. This is part of Paper 1, Unit B, The Living World. Cold environments such as Antarctica and parts of the Arctic Circle are remote and unspoilt, and they are the last remaining areas of wilderness. Despite their extreme climate and inaccessibility, they are increasingly at risk from economic development. In this video, we are going to think about why polar and tundra regions need protecting. Wilderness areas need protecting for many reasons. We need to leave some places in their natural state so that biodiversity is maintained and that individual species are not at risk of extinction. Additionally, scientists need to be able to access undisturbed environments to carry out important research. Wilderness areas also provide vital services for the rest of the world. For example, the poles are covered in white snow and ice which reflects sunlight and helps regulate global temperatures. Unfortunately, climate change has led to melting at the poles, meaning there is less snow and ice to do this important function. The permafrost, which is the frozen ground, traps a huge amount of methane. When this melts, the methane is released into the atmosphere and contributes to the greenhouse effect, causing global warming. Finally, cold environments are extremely sensitive to change and take a long time to recover from environmental damage. This is because plants grow so slowly in the freezing temperature. A good example of this is the tracks left by off-road vehicles that take up to 50 years to disappear completely. Another important reason to protect cold environments is because traditional cultures are at risk. Wilderness areas often have traditional communities. These people are at risk of economic development threatening their way of life. Outside influences have a big impact on cultural heritage. For example, many native languages are dying out as English is being increasingly spoken and native tribes are even starting to choose English names for their children. Protecting traditional cultures often, though, comes into conflict with conservation efforts. For example, in some Alaskan traditional communities, they are allowed to hunt and kill bowhead whales, a right that is protected by US law. Additionally, Alaskan Inuit people often gain money through becoming guides for wealthy tourists who wish to hunt polar bears. However, polar bears were declared an endangered species by the US Supreme Court in 2008, giving them protected status so legally they cannot be hunted. So let's have a think about how wilderness areas in polar and tundra regions are protected. Antarctica has only really been explored since the start of the 20th century, although large-scale seal and whale hunting in the Southern Ocean has taken place for over 200 years. People were in awe of the spectacular images of glaciers and the polar wildlife brought back by our Antarctic explorers such as Shackleton in the late 1910s. In the following decades, more and more countries tried to lay claim to part of the continent, with many of them looking at ways to commercially exploit its natural resources. As a result, the countries with the territorial claim to Antarctica signed the Antarctic Treaty in 1959, which was ratified in 1961. This has successfully controlled economic development. The treaty recognises the vital role that Antarctica plays in scientific research, particularly with vital studies into climate change. It also controls the level of tourism taking place, ensuring that the industry follows strict guidelines so there is minimal disturbance to wildlife. In 1998, the Protocol on Environmental Protection to the Antarctic Treaty reinforced the agreement further, ensuring that no new activities can take place without a careful environmental risk assessment that minimises any impacts and economic activities such as tourism have to follow very strict guidelines. Despite this, tourism has grown rapidly, with almost 50,000 people visiting annually. Most of these tourists are just viewing the landscape from ice-breaking boats like the one on the screen. However, some tourists venture onto the land to photograph wildlife or take part in organised treks. Fortunately, tourists have to pay between $10,000 and $50,000 for their experience of Antarctica. 
Luckily, these prices mean that mass tourism will never be an issue here. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on the reasons why cold environments need protection. Thank you for watching.